Hello everyone, this is Inma and on this video tutorial series I'm going to give you some tricks to improve character shading. On this video we will focus on hair. We will go from very basic shadows to cool effects that will make your character stand out. Let's begin! To shade hair properly we need to understand the volume of a human head. Because of its roundish nature we must avoid straight lines on the upper side. Think of a sphere. To give volume, we must use curved shading and lights, right? We will do the same with the upper part of the head. Where shadows and lights are applied depends on where we decide the light source to be, so it's best to decide that before we start shading. I created a layer just to mark the light source so I can see it all the time, but I will delete or hide this layer after I'm done with the illustration. Now that the light source placement has been decided, I'm going to start shading. I create a new layer over the layer where I have painted the hair. I set its blending mode to multiply, and I click on the clip to layer below icon. Now I start creating a very basic shadow using mapping pen and a soft color. The size of my mapping pen is big, so I can cover big areas if I add more pressure. Now I'm going to create a strands of hair feel to the shadows, still using mapping pen. Switching between the color I used for shading and the transparent color to erase, I make the shadows look less flat. By default, you can quickly switch between solid color and transparent color by pressing C on your keyboard. If you want to switch between main color and sub color instead, press X. Mapping pen is amazing for hair effects because it reacts to pen pressure in extreme ways, going from super thin lines to really thick ones with no effort. Make sure to follow the direction of the hair when adding these little shadows or removing parts of them. Also, spiky lines work better than roundish ones when we are shading hair. Now I'm going to lock the transparent pixels for the shadow layer and I'm going to give the hair more detail with watercolor brushes. I will start by darkening some areas with a darker color. Having deeper levels of shadows makes an illustration richer, but make sure not to overdo the darker parts. If you end up covering the whole shaded area with the new color, the contrast we are trying to create will be lost. The brush I'm using can be downloaded from Assets, you will find the link in the video description. When applying darker areas, remember where the light is coming from and try to imagine the volume of the character. For example, the head projects shadow over the back parts of the hair. Now it's time to lighten parts of the shading to add more contrast. I will use white to do so. Don't worry, because the layer is on multiply blending mode, the shadows will not actually turn white, they will just be lightened up to the base color level. White on multiply layers works like a transparent color. To apply lights, I create a new layer, I set its blending mode to screen, and I click on the clip to layer below icon. I'm going to use mapping pen again. I'm applying very basic lights because this tutorial is focused on shading. Still, you will see that even with simple lights, you can create nice effects. I do the same thing I did with the shadows. I use the solid color to apply lights and then I remove parts with the transparent color. Make sure the light follows a roundish path like at the top of the head, but also keep them spiky. Making some tiny lines go up and down will help create the hair effect. When using mapping pen to do this effect, try pressing very lightly at the beginning and ending of the line 
and applying some more pressure on the middle. Next, I right-click on the shadow layer and I create a selection from that layer. I will create a new layer on top of it and I will set the blending mode to screen. Using blue and the soft airbrush, I'm going to give some parts of the hair a colder feeling. Mixing warm colors like red or brown with cold colors like blue or purple results in richer color schemes and it helps to increase the contrast between colors. Now I want to remove parts of the cold color. I could just erase them, but it's best to create a layer mask to do so. By using the transparent color over the layer mask, I hide parts I don't want, and by using any solid color over the layer mask, I get those parts back. I'm using the lighter pencil to erase over the layer mask. Feel free to switch between that and mapping pen. Every time you need to erase parts of an effect that is not flat, use masking layers. If you erase over a gradation or a textured color normally, there is no going back if you regret later. But if you use a layer mask, you are just hiding parts and you can get them back anytime just by painting over them with any solid color. I'm almost done with the hair, but I'm concerned there is not enough contrast. I create a selection from the shadow layer again and now I'm going to create a new layer to set its blending mode to color burn. I will be using the soft airbrush and a grayish color to darken parts of the shading. The color burn blending mode darkens color a lot because it burns them, so use this with soft strokes. Again, to remove parts of this layer, I will use a layer mask. Now I'm going to create a new layer under the shading and the lights. Using the eyedropper, I will pick up the skin color, and using the soft airbrush, I will paint over her forehead and the sides of her face. This is a little trick that helps to illuminate the face and also gives the impression that you can see a bit of her skin under the hair. To finish, I'm going to add loose hairs using mapping pen. I create a new layer on top of the line art and I'm going to use a dark color to see what I'm doing. I will change it later. I'm using mapping pen to do this, because, like I explained before, it reacts to pen pressure so well it allows me to go from thicker lines to thinner ones in one stroke, which looks good for hair. Once I'm done, I pick up the base color of the hair and I turn all the loose hairs to that color using the Convert to Drawing Color function on the Edit menu. Now I'm gonna lock the transparent pixels of that layer so as not to paint outside the current lines, and I'm going to give those loose hairs some shadows and lights. I will pick up the colors I need with the eyedropper. To finish, I unlock the transparent pixels and I'm going to add some more loose hairs using only the color for the lights. With this, we are done with the hair. It looks more complex than it actually is when you try it yourself, so I encourage you to do so. Also, you can apply some steps and not others according to your style or the specific illustration you are working on. On my next tutorial, I will explain how to shade skin. Stay tuned and see you next time. Bye bye!